Okay, this is Di Miller here with Joey Capito, and he is doing his first blog for Lacrosse is Awesome. So, Joey, tell us about the game tonight against the Georgia Swarm, the home opener, and the season opener. It was awesome. I mean, uh, what else can you say? We had a really good game today. It could have went either way, but we were able to pull up the win. It was an electric atmosphere in the Pepsi Center. The fans were awesome, super loud. You could barely hear the guy next to you. And, you know, we were very fortunate to come away with that victory, and I think it's a great start for our season. Uh, obviously, there's a lots, lots of things we need to improve on. Uh, we need to kind of come together more as a defense. We gave up a couple easy goals, and, you know, offensively, there were times where I don't think we were as crisp as we needed to be, but all in all, great team win. Everyone battled, and, you know, really good to get the first one under the belt because it's a long season, 18 games. Uh, every single one's important if you want to make the playoff. And, be in competition for the Champions Cup. So we put ourselves in a great position coming out the gate, and hopefully we can get back to Rochester next week and get another one. Okay, so I know that you've got a lot of new players on the team this year, and of course you picked up Callum Crawford, and so how is it mixing with the new guys that are on the team? Well, so far, so good. Uh, obviously there's going to be growing pains. We're not going to be fantastic right away. There's going to be some room for improvement, but you know, like I said, we were able to get that win today. I think seven new guys in the lineup tonight, but some of them, everyone played awesome. And you know, uh, a young guy like Jordan uh, Gillies coming up huge with a goal and late in the fourth quarter. Ali Geis back in the lineup played great defensively for us. Uh, Crawford was awesome all day, playing through a little bit of an injury there. And you know, it's uh, a great start, and we're only going to get better from here. We're going to keep uh, playing our systems, watch the film, and try to improve each and every week. Okay. Now, with Elaw being out. Um, and I know you guys only can um, have 18 active guys and, and for the with the collective bargaining agreement that happened a few years ago. So how does it affect you guys when you do end up having uh, a key player like Elaw would have been last year had he not forego in the uh, 2015 season? How do you think it affects your team when you've got a key player like that that is not in the lineup? Yeah, you know, injuries hurt. And, uh we're a little bit thin up on that, that right side with Cam Flint being hurt as well uh, and on the IR right now. But, you know, everyone did a great job today. Burke, Noble, and Crawford Ross on the right side. We got some guys out of the back door who can play up there. Uh, Dax and Decker is fantastic. Had two goals tonight. I thought he played a very, very strong game. And, you know, you just got to make do with what you have. And certain situations are going to arise during the course of the season where guys are going to get hurt and guys are going to be out of the lineup. But next man up, and he's going to be ready to fill his role and just keep plugging forward. Okay. All right. Now, I know McArdle had that sick diving goal. And then I don't remember who it was that uh, there was another player that tried to also do that, and then they ended up calling him in the crease, uh, which I was kind of shocked that they threw the challenge flag. So what... It just from a player's perspective, what do you think is going through a coach's mind when they end up throwing a challenge well, flag on something like that? I think the one you're like talking that? about was Callum Crawford. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yep. At under two minutes, you lose your challenges. Okay. So as a coach, you might as well use them if you have them. And we know it didn't really go on the net, but if sure. you use the challenge, it also gives a rest for your defense. Uh, let the players kind of get their energy back, let them get their breath back. And, uh, you know, you weren't necessarily trying to win the challenge, but just kind of stop the game, slow it down a little bit, and let everyone get their breath and get ready to go. Okay, that's that's a good thing to know because a lot of fans don't understand that type of thing. So getting it from a player's perspective really helps those people that aren't really familiar with lacrosse understand the game. So now, as far as next week, now who is it that you guys play again Rochester, next week? Yeah. Okay. So you play them in Rochester, and then the following week you come back here uh, to play. So what are your goals in going into uh, next weekend with get, Rochester? Get to 2-0. Uh, okay. And you know to do that, you got to worry about the process and not the outcome. Each individual shift, we got to be much more crisp on defense. And I thought offensively we swung the ball very well for the majority of okay. the game. You know, keep playing to our system and good things will happen. Okay. Yeah, I, I did notice that between both teams, you could tell first regular game uh, of the, you know, home opener, whatever, regular game of the season, that there was a little bit of um, trying to get used to one another in an actual game that really counted. And as, you know, watching the game throughout, I noticed that you guys, uh, in the beginning, you guys were clicking really well, and then there was a few little glitches, but then you guys pulled it back together again. What do you guys do when you get into the locker room at halftime 
And, and I mean, what do you talk about? Do you, do you just sit there and try to figure things out or, or what ends up actually happening? Uh, you know, you talk about what you did well and talk about what you need to improve on. And uh, it's important that you don't harp too much on positive or negatives. You gotta stay even keel and kind of go with it, you know. Uh, in lacrosse, it's a game of runs. Certain things are going to happen, so you can't be too emotional about it. You have to recognize where you made mistakes, recognize what you did uh, very well, and keep going forward the rest of the game. Okay. Now, I know we had an interview right after you made the NLL Transition Player of the Year, uh, and you just announced your engagement. Congratulations. I am very happy for the two of you. Uh, so, I know we talked a little bit about it in our other interview, but... Um, how did it feel when you did get that award? You know, it was a nice honor, and, and it's great to be recognized by the league. But at the end of the day, I just want to win championships, and uh, whatever I can do to help my team get better, I'm going to do. Uh, it's kind of, as an old coach would say, a square hole for a circular peg. Uh, you know, it's when you play such a team game, individual awards don't mean too much. Like I said, it's nice to be acknowledge but at the end of the day I'm just going to try to help us get better and whatever my role is whatever I can do to help us win and that's what I'm going to do. Okay which that shows the true side of a team player I hope and so. as we all know there is no I in team no matter what anybody says it is about the team and the outcome in the end. So well I wish, wish you guys luck next week in Rochester and hoping that you guys come back 2-0 and and we will be looking forward to your next blog for Lacrosse is Awesome. Awesome. And welcome to the team. Thank Love you. Love having you on it. Thanks, Thanks Joey.